Welcome to It's Your Case, brought to you by VetCT.com. I'm Lucy Meehan, I'm your radiologist on demand for this week. Today's example is a 10-year-old quarter horse mare that was grade 4 out of 10 lame on the left forelimb and blocks to a palmar digital nerve block. Once you've reviewed the radiographs using your systematic approach, then you're ready to watch this video. Now I'm going to highlight the most important points of this case. I'm going to really concentrate on the navicular bone. So we're going to start by looking at our lateral medial view and our dorsoproximal palmary distal oblique views. So when I'm looking at a lateral medial view, the first thing I like to do is assess whether how lateral it is. So we're nice and straight through our joint spaces here and here. Our navicular bone flexor cortex is one white line rather than two, so that tells me that the flexor cortex is nice and superimposed. So I'm happy that this is a good navicular, uh, sorry, a good lateral medial view. Looking at our navicular bone, I would normally expect that we wouldn't extend our navicular bone, wouldn't the flexor cortex wouldn't extend much beyond lines drawn parallel with the proximal distal edges. So you can see we have got some extension here of the proximal distal aspects of the flexor cortex of the navicular bone. So that starts to ring some alarm bells for me. If we move on to our dorsoproximal palmar distal oblique view, I'm just going to zoom in on our navicular bone here um, and we're going to, uh, sorry it's just changed view, we're just going to um, look at our navicular bone in a bit more detail. So I'm just outlining the distal horizontal border of the navicular bone here, we've got our lateral and our medial sloping border and then we've got our proximal border here. So the first thing we're going to focus on is our distal horizontal border and we look on our distal horizontal border at our synovial invaginations. So these are the little um, invaginations that are happening on the distal horizontal border. The dogma is that we would expect seven small evenly sized synovial invaginations. Now I can see one, two, three, four but these look very big they're very irregularly sized and shaped and um, so we've got one sort of y-shaped one here um, we've got another lollipop shaped one here and then we've got these two very very big uh, invaginations here and actually these extend down to here and um, so I'm concerned that this navicular bone looks abnormal the other thing that's concerning me is that our proximal border here is undulating I would normally expect that to be nice and straight. Some other small things, we've got a little bit of lateral extension in this corner as well. So this navicular bone is concerning me. Uh, I'm going to look at my other view, which is good for the navicular bone, which is our palmaroproximal palmarodistal oblique view. I'm going to put that on the uh, left of the screen here. So this is quite a nice palmaroproximal palmarodistal oblique view. We can see our distal phalanx. We've got nice symmetry in our... Uh, palmar processes and we can see the flexor cortex of the navicular bone quite nicely so this is projecting the flexor cortex of the navicular bone um, out onto the plate so if we look um, at the medial side of our flexor cortex so our marker is always lateral so I know that this side of my mouse is hovering over is medial we can see that there is some po it's quite poorly defined the junction between the compact bone and the spongy bone and you can almost think that that probably extends to here and that would suggest that there's some extra bone being put down there and I think that's a bit more obvious laterally. If we look at our sagittal groove we normally expect that to be quite symmetrical and, and quite um, you know symmetrical medial to lateral and, and quite rounded whereas it's quite flattened off here and if we just tweak the windowing a little bit you can see there's a shadow so a lucency within this flexor cortex here and that raises a suspicion that we've got something called a flexor cortex erosion so all in all um i think this navicular bone looks uh, quite unhappy i would say this has um, severe navicular disease based on the alterations in the synovial invaginations on the distal horizontal border and this um, lucency here, which I think represents a flexor cortex erosion. So um, what do we do from here? The horse has been diagnosed with navicular disease um, and we um, are suspicious that navicular bones are a problem. But what we know is that actually navicular bone disease on its own is unusual. And actually, especially when we've got these erosions in the flexor cortex, we are worried about the deep digital flexor tendon that passes over the back of the navicular bone and inserts on the distal phalanx. And we know that if we have got flexor cortex erosions, that can adhere 
to the navicular bone in this region. So we would recommend that this horse has an MRI examination to assess the soft tissues of the foot and that will help with our prognosis in the long term for this horse. Thank you for listening. Uh, do remember this is your case. Um, do be sure to review the full report uh, and feel free to ask any questions on social media. Thank you.